If you're a mid to high handicapper who really wants to improve their game, but doesn't have the time to practice their chipping, then do yourself a favor, watch this video, and then probably buy yourself a pink chipper or maybe something similar. But trust me, you're gonna wanna watch this one. Now I'm big enough and ugly enough to admit that having the chipper in my bag puts a pretty big dent in my golfing ego. However, after using it for several rounds, I've gotta say, as someone who has no time to practice my short game, this has saved me about five shots per round. In summary, it costs around 140 pounds and it's a club designed to make chipping easier. How does it do that? Well, it's got a shorter shaft. It's 37 degrees loft, so somewhere between an eight and nine iron. And it has a slightly thicker grip, or at least not quite as tapered. And it's actually got a longer grip on it as well, so you can choke down on the club if you need to. It's also got a cambered sole, which makes it nice and easy to cut through the rough. And the whole point is that it's really easy to do chips with. Simple as that, especially off of tight bare lights. If they make you nervous, you're gonna to wanna to check this club out. King Chipper is trying its absolute hardest to massage your ego. Yes, it's got a wide sole, but it is cavity backed and you've got this little bit of detailing on the back there. It kind of, sort of, ish looks like an iron. Now you can drop as many vowels out of your name as you like and try to blend in with my other clubs, but you know what you are. You're dirty and I love it. Now I appreciate that a chipper isn't a particularly versatile club, but if you're someone that struggles with your chipping or really struggles with your tight lies and just don't have the time to practice to improve your technique and get better, well, this could be the solution. And this is probably where a lot of the stigma around having a chipper in the bag comes in. They allow a lower skilled golfer to chip the ball in certain circumstances just as well, or if not better and more consistently, than the much higher skilled golfers. The better golfers, they don't really like that. So while it's not a particularly pretty looking club, if it's improving my game and it means I don't have to practice as much and it's a legal club, well, real beauty's on the inside. That's just something ugly people say. This is a great example right here of how the chipper can really help out a higher handicap golfer in these situations. So in the rough, slight downhill lie, got to get across fair bit of rubbish before getting the green and then it's a tiered green down to the flag so with a chipper just gonna put in motion nice and controlled over the bad stuff nice and slow to the top of the hill down it comes and I tell you what there's no way I'd feel confident of making that shot especially on camera as a 19 handicap golfer if I had a lob wedge in my hand and for those of you who say that a chipper takes up valuable space in your bag, well, what about the driver? That's an even less versatile club than this one. And how many of you actually carry a free wood or a free hybrid that really you don't even use? I know that I've carried around a free wood for the last two years. I must have hit it twice. What's the point in that? And yet I carry around two, sometimes three wedges, and I don't practice nearly enough with them to actually mean that I'm any good with them. That's why I'm a 19 handicapper. Well, one of the reasons anyway. Now, of course, the chipper's not gonna do all of the work for you but it means that you've got to do a lot less. If you're anything like me, then you've had the occasional lesson and you try your hardest to eke out some free time to practice, but in reality, you simply don't have enough time to practice your short game. So how can you expect to use what is quite a difficult club in a 60 degree or a 58 degree wedge and use it as well as, well, a really high standard golfer. That's why for me, the chipper, it's been a bit of a revelation. The way that this thing is set up, and weighted and designed, just cuts through the ground if I'm in the rough doing a short chip, and you can use it probably up to about 40 or 50 yards if you really wanted to. And because you've got a more upright stance, taking a bit more of a putter-like approach, there's fewer variables. There's less that can go wrong. Now, I appreciate that this is winter golf. However, in the summer, this is a really difficult green to hold. And we're about 45 yards out, so, I've got the chipper in my hand. This is gonna be heavy, wet conditions, but even so, just off the front. If you're a nervy chipper, that's still probably a much better result than if you went with a lofted wedge. In fact, let's try it right now. So I've got a 60 degree here. Now I haven't even done that on purpose, genuinely. Let's throw another one down. I wish I had the ability to do that on command because it means that I'd have the ability not to do it on command. 
but it's such a good example of why the Ping Chipper just might be the best club in your bag. Now this is where that approach shot just landed with the chipper back there. So you know that you've got a club in the bag to get yourself out of these tricky little situations and hopefully give you a one putt. I'm a 19 handicap. I don't practice my chipping. I don't practice with this club. And I've now got a kick in. All right, it's for double bogey, but it doesn't matter. Now, whether you need to spend 150 pounds on this specific chipper, well, it's kind of debatable. On the plus side, it's pretty much the most normal looking chipper style club available to buy on the market. But I appreciate that 140 pounds is quite a lot of money for that privilege. And there's several other chippers out there on the market that although they don't look quite as nice as this club, they look normally quite outlandish and almost alien-like with some of them. They come in different lofts, different styles, and ultimately, one of those might actually perform a little bit better for you and will probably cost quite a bit cheaper. If you'd like to see me film a comparison video of all the different chipper clubs out on the market, then let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'll go out and buy a few more. One of the biggest golf YouTube channels has done a comparison video recently, and in my honest opinion, wasn't a very good video. I very much doubt you're watching this one, Mark. So the Ping Chipper is very much staying in my bag. Don't forget, if you're thinking about buying one of these for yourself, then I've included any links and discounts down in the description below. And if you are a mid to high handicap golfer, and you're thinking about picking up a brand new set of wedges for yourself, then why not check out my full review of Costco's Kirkland wedges, which you can find right here. Oh, of course, don't forget to hit like and subscribe.